Have you ever wondered what a stiff shaft means? There's quite the range in stiff golf shafts, especially with irons. I'm gonna test the range and explain the differences between all the different stiff golf shafts. Hey golfers, it's Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter at Second Swing. Well, when you come in for a fitting, and a fitter may say, you fit into a stiff golf shaft, what does that really mean? Well, first off, we're basing it off your club speed. So for irons, which we're gonna focus on today, generally speaking, with club speed from 78 to about 88 miles an hour, generally you're gonna fit into a stiff golf shaft. For drivers, it would be around about 90 to 105 miles an hour club speed with your driver. But we're focusing on irons today. So I'm gonna do a test today where I'm gonna compare four different stiff iron golf shafts. We have a graphite golf shaft, the Ulta CB Slate stiff golf shaft. That one weighs 82 grams. We also have the True Temper Elevate 95 stiff. That one actually weighs 97 grams. I've also got the KBS Tour C Taper Light 110. That one weighs 110 grams. And we're also gonna throw in the True Tempered Dynamic Gold S300. That's gonna be the heaviest golf shaft and it's gonna weigh in the high 120 gram area there too. So notice there's a range. We've got a range from about 82 grams to about 130 grams. So what does this mean? Well, typically, if you have a higher swing speed, or a faster tempo, you might want to play that little heavier shaft. Keep that spin rate down a little bit and control that club face a little bit easier. At the other end of the spectrum, if you're hovering a little bit on the lower end of the category with regards to club speed, you may want a little lighter golf shaft to help get the ball up in the air and spin the ball a little bit. But keep in mind, this is always going to be player dependent. Everyone swings differently. That's why it's important to come in and get fit and try out the different weighted golf shafts and the different flexes as well. We're gonna test the range. I'm gonna hit a whole bunch of shots with the Ping I-210 iron today, and we're gonna talk about the differences in numbers and dispersion. I'm gonna begin with the KBS C Taper Light. I'm gonna hit some shots with each golf shaft. I'm gonna talk about the feel and the numbers. So feel is very important when it comes to golf shaft. So let's first talk about the KBS Tour C Taper Light. As I mentioned, it weighs 110 grams. So this is gonna be kind of right in the middle of today's test. One thing I noticed with this particular golf shaft, and we're talking feel, I had a hard time, because I have a quick in transition with my irons, to feel like that club face was gonna be square at impact every single time. And we could notice that with the dispersion pattern a little bit. You'll notice I had one kind of way over there to the left, I had one kind of to the right. Now we're talking probably a range of about 30 yards with a seven iron. That probably doesn't mean that I'm gonna hit the green every single time. So I had a little harder time controlling the club face because my transition is very quick. Keep in mind, transition is very, very important to touch on with irons as well. Generally speaking, if you have a faster transition, you need a heavier golf shaft, a heavier or stiffer golf shaft. If you have a slower transition, you need to have a lighter golf shaft, a smoother, lighter golf shaft there too. So kind of interesting, when I was hitting this club, you know, I'm not gonna probably see a major difference in spin rate between the irons because I deliver the club pretty well the same every single time. But generally speaking, this is gonna be probably in the middle with regards to spin rate. We're gonna have other golf shafts that are gonna be lighter that should spin a little bit more and other golf shafts that are heavier that should spin a little bit less. But let's hit those other ones and compare the differences. The Ulta CB Slate, it's a graphite golf shaft. As I mentioned, it weighs around about 82 grams. For me, I talked about my transition being a little bit quicker. With having a quicker transition, I had a hard time getting that club face squared impact. So I was leaving the face open. 
if you have a smoother transition, it's going to be the opposite. If you have a smoother transition with a lighter golf shaft, that club head's then going to turn over a little easier and your tendency may be a little to miss it more to the left side or help to draw the ball a little easier. For me, having a quick transition, I loaded that shaft too early and it was just coming over to the right side every single time. But I did generate more club speed with the lighter graphite shaft. And I will say that first shot that I hit with this shaft felt like a miss hit. And we know the spin rate was a little bit lower with that one. But I will say that when I hit a miss hit, and the first shot I hit with this golf shaft was a miss hit, is the vibrations really dampened. So I felt really good, even though I didn't quite catch it perfect. We noticed the spin rate on that one, first shot I hit, so that shot eight, was quite a bit lower than all the others, because that's because I didn't quite catch it perfect. But in general sense, this lighter golf shaft did spin quite a bit more than the C-Taper 110 stiff. The other thing we also notice is the height. So with the height with the graphite golf shaft being a little lighter, is I was able to hit a little higher. So it was flying on average 121 feet in the air versus the C-Taper 110 stiff, which was flying about 114 feet in the air. Let's test the other two. Felt really good. True Tampa Dynamic Gold S300. It's been around for a long time. It's been around for a long time for good cause. It's a very, very good golf shaft. Very, very stable. Now it is also very heavy. For me, this felt like the most trustworthy golf shaft. I feel like every time I was able to get the club face just to turn over just a little bit to hit my tiny little draw that I liked. So felt really good, felt really, really stable. Could definitely feel like at impact that I was doing exactly what I wanted to do every single time. So let's talk about the numbers a little bit. So if you can kind of see I did drop a little bit in club speed. On average, it was about 86 miles an hour. Um, ball speed, about 124 miles an hour. So I dropped a little bit there, but the most important thing is kind of the consistency. So a little bit less spin than the graphite golf shaft, um, but the consistency. So I'm looking at that plus or minus number. When I've got an iron in my hands, I want to hit the ball the same distance every single time. When I hit six shots and I got a plus or minus 1.6, I'm very, very happy with that. So I love the fact that, that it was doing the same thing every single time. So we can see that over here on the dispersion pattern a little bit. Usually in fittings, I like to ask the customer, what circle do you like better? Well, if, it was, if I was asking myself today, I do like that purple circle a little bit better than the other two. Not only is it smaller, but from left to right, it was probably the most accurate. We got a sleeper here. <laughs> Those two are on top of each other. And finally, in today's test, we have the Elevate 95. In the stiff S300, it weighs 97 grams. This was kind of a sleeper. It definitely kind of surprised me. I was able to hit the ball a little bit straighter, maybe a tendency to leave the ball just a little bit to the right. There was one shot, I think it was the fourth shot, I hit it and looked like it was gonna go right and keep going right, but it kinda of hung in there. So I was kinda of surprised with how stable this was considering it was kinda of fairly light. So definitely light. If we take a look at the height that I hit these shots, I feel like it was flying a little bit on the higher side. Um, so yeah, 116 feet in the air. So a little bit higher than the True Tampa Dynamic Gold uh, S300. So this was felt a little bit lighter, but the dispersion pattern was pretty good. I must, I must say there is four circles pretty close to the center line right there. But definitely notice a trend. There's definitely a trend with the golf shafts that are too light for me, where I get kind of a range from far top left to bottom right, They're kind of like on an angle, where if you take a look at the S300, for example, the consistency was the same kind of across the board, which is kind of important to note. If you know my golf game, and it's also important to ask customers what their, like, what their shot tendencies are. If you know my golf game, I like to hit a little drawer. And with the S300, I was able to hit just a little bit more of a drawer consistently there too. But I wanna break down the numbers and compare each model, talk about the height differences, talk about the spin differences and club speed differences. So let's just take a look at that. 
Let's first start off with club speed. So if we look at the club speed, kind of interesting how actually everything is ranked from the lightest golf shaft, I was able to generate the most club speed, to the heaviest golf shaft, I was able to generate, well, I didn't generate as much club speed there too. So about two miles an hour separated the lightest golf shaft from the heaviest golf shaft. You can see ranked perfectly from Ulta CB Slate, the lightest, to the Elevate 95, the next lightest, and then KBSC Taper 110 stiff was then a little bit heavier, and then S300 was once again the heaviest golf shaft there too. If we look at ball speed, it's kind of interesting. When I, if you look at the ball speed there, the highest ball speed actually was the KBSC Taper 110 stiff. That's because I kind of had those couple that I kind of pulled up there, so that had the widest range in regards to dispersion with regards to ball speed there too. But Consistency, so I want to look at that ball speed consistency. So the winner was the S300 at plus or minus 1.0. If we look at spin, spin consistency is very, very important. You want the ball to do the same thing every single time. We'll notice the consistency there if we see the S300 at plus or minus 123. As I mentioned, it's a golf shaft that's going to fit my golf swing profile a little better. It was consistently spinning about the same every single time. Um, if we look at the other end of the spectrum, we see the Ulta CB Slate, the lightest golf shaft, had the highest inconsistency with regards to spin. As I mentioned, generally you're speaking, you'll see a trend where the lightest golf shaft will spin the most and the heaviest golf shaft usually spins the less. Well, we didn't quite see that. We saw that the lightest golf shaft did spin the most, but the heaviest golf shaft wasn't the lowest spinning golf shaft in this case there. So, as I mentioned, a lot of that is definitely player tendencies across the board. If we look at distance, you know, I like to play my distance with my 7-iron right around about 180 yards from my carry distance. Well, we're right on, the, right on the mark there with two of those golf shafts. S300, once again, play that play shaft very similar to that. Notice that plus or minus carry distance at plus or minus 1.6 was the best. So that's definitely the, kind of the most important thing there too. Carry distance is more important than total distance. So keep that in mind when you're doing a club fitting. Uh, and then finally, if we look at the height, look at the height and the landing angle. This is going to be kind of important. So if we were going to rank the height from the lowest, or the highest to the lowest, we'll notice that the Ulta CB Slate, the lightest golf shaft, flew the highest, 121 feet in the air. Actually, this is perfect. It's ranked from basically the lightest golf shaft to the heaviest with regards to height. So, very kind of interesting details here with regards to comparing these particular golf shafts. As I mentioned, if you are doing a club fitting, generally speaking, if you have a club speed with your 7 iron between 78 miles an hour and 88 miles an hour, you generally fit into a stiff golf shaft. There are going to be outliers. As I mentioned, if you have a quicker transition and your club speed is still kind of in stiff flex but towards the top end, you may want to play around with that extra stiff golf shaft. Also, at the other end of the spectrum, if you have a slow tempo and your swing speed is kind of towards the bottom end of the stiff range, you may want to play around with a regular golf shaft. One may make it easier for you to load that club easier. End of the day, that's the goal for the club fitter, is to make sure that golf shaft is working best for the customer there too. So, not always perfect science. Keep in mind, it's always going to be player dependent. But because it's player dependent, you have to come in and get fit. Or you have to work with someone online at secondswing.com to figure out which golf shaft that you should be playing. So this is a great test explaining stiff golf shafts. Come on into second swing and get fit like a pro.